Hi, Internet family. I'm going to start reading a new book for you today. It was originally published in 1937, and I would also love to feature this in my monthly magic book club, which has been a little dormant for a while, but we're bringing it back, and this is something that we're focusing on. This book is called Winged Pharaoh. It was written by Joan Grant. Like I said, originally in 1937, it was published in Great Britain, and then it was most recently published by Ariel Press in 1985. So if you like it, get it online. It's one of those that the things she talks about in this book, you can't necessarily prove logically, but you will feel the truth in your heart as you're reading it if, if it resonates with you. So let's get into it. I apologize for the background noise. They're doing construction in my neighborhood. Okay, here we go. And I also apologize for any mosquitoes because they are really around today. All right. Winged Pharaoh by Joan Grant. Chapter One. Into Exile. When the time came for me to return to Earth, a messenger of the great overlords told me that I should be reborn in calm, and the two who would fashion my new body would welcome me, for we had been companions aforetime, and the ties between us were of love and not of hatred, which are the two threads that bind men most closely together upon Earth. And for my brother, I should have one with whom I had traveled long upon the great journey. When this was told to me, the sorrow which all know when they must leave their true home and go to the place of mists upon another day's journey was lightened, for I should have companions in my exile. While my mother still sheltered me with her body, my father sought to find a gift that would tell her of the love that filled his heart. He could not tell her of his love in words, for words are but the fleeting shadows of reality. Carvers and turquoise, nor workers in gold or ivory could please him with their finest craftsmanship. One day, as he was walking in the gardens of the palace in the cool of the evening, he thought of making a garden for my mother, a garden such as had never been seen before. Only by this could he symbolize his love, for nothing can be greater than its creator, and though a carving may be a song in stone, it is born of the sculptor, but the plants of the earth are children of the gods. And so, in a curve like the young moon, he planted trees to shade her from the sun at noonday, and bushes with aromatic leaves to spice the air for her refreshment. And for the bowstring of this living bow, there was the lapping water of the lake, which stretched its silver to the setting sun, a minty in the west. Then he mustered a host of grassy spears, which closed their ranks to make the smooth green lawns. And he starred them with little flowers, scarlet and yellow, violet, blue, and white, which grew to make a carpet for her feet. From lands beyond the boundaries of Khan, he brought the scarlet lilies of the land of gold and trumpet vines that grow far to the south where men walk in their own shadow. And from the north he summoned lemon trees, white oleanders and anemones, and flowers that keep their perfume for the moon to fill the dusk with their drowsy sweetness. And honeysuckle entwined arbita flowers and the blue convolvulus to make her wreaths. When I was 12 days old, my father, for the first time, took her to this garden that he had made for her. It was surrounded by a garden wall, and upon the lintel of the door of cedarwood were carved their names, Za'atet and Merinisit, the beloved of Pharaoh's heart. Together, they went into the flowering shade where the paths were secret as gazelle tracks through the reeds. When she reached the heart of the green quiet, and saw a garden more beautiful than any she had dreamed. She said that here, the petals of the flowers were as though the clouds of sunset had been carved in blossoms by the sun god Ra, who upon the earth could never before have found such pleasure for his rays. And both agreed that it must have pleased the god to see his children here so glorified. So they named the place Sekhet Ara, the meadow of Ra, and to me they also gave this name. My brother, 
who had returned to earth three years before me was called Nea. For at his birth, the priest of Mott in attendance, seeing those who came to speed him on his way, had said, Hence is one who is worthy to rule over the people of Kham, for the companions of his spirit are long in years, and this child shall be called Nea, born with wisdom. For his master won the name when in the old land he listened to the voice that warned him of the coming of the great rain. And just as his master guided his people when the evil ones had disappeared between, sorry, beneath the waters, so shall this child guide the people of Kham when they are assailed by evil ones who in their turn shall be engulfed by the sea. That's chapter one. I hear my kitties meowing, so I have to go attend to them. I'll read chapter two later. It's entitled, I Need This. Love this book, Winged Pharaoh by Joan Grant.